Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. This beast is my Power Mac G5 Quad, the fastest PowerPC Mac that Apple ever released. We've done a lot of wacky stuff with it on this channel, including installing a bunch of Linuxes, Linuxi? And streaming from it directly to Twitch. But if you've been around the channel for a while, you might know that I get a certain Druaga 1 level of excitement installing SSDs into computers that are way too old for SSDs. Now being from 2005, the G5 Quad came out really just a year or two before SATA SSDs like these really started hitting the consumer market. It originally shipped with a fast 250 gigabyte spinning hard drive at 7200 RPM, pretty good for 17 years ago, but hard drive tech has evolved a little bit since then. So what if we could bypass the built-in SATA 1 altogether and get this thing running off of something even more cutting edge than a 3.5 inch SSD? Like this WD Black Gaming NVMe drive. And would this even make a difference in this ancient PowerPC Mac? So stay tuned. And if you enjoy going to great lengths to eke out performance improvements on aging computers that probably can't do anything with those performance improvements, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Oh, and make sure you follow the Twitch channel too. I'll link that below because I've been streaming there from only PowerPC Macs, including this G5 and a 22 year old iMac G3. And it works better than you'd probably expect. Throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s, IDE and SCSI were the predominant standards for connecting hard drives to home computers. In 2003 though, SATA 1.0 was released, bumping up the throughput from IDE's maximum 133 megabytes per second to 150 megabytes per second with a much more convenient connection, along with a bunch of other advantages like hot plugging. It was followed by two more SATA revisions through 2009. SATA 2 doubled the throughput from 150 to 300 megabytes per second, and SATA 3 doubled it again to 600 megabytes per second. And then there's NVMe, which is quickly becoming the modern standard for fast storage. Most modern motherboards have slots right on the board for connecting NVMe drives. No cables needed. And NVMe speeds blow SATA right out of the water. 3,500 megabytes per second for Gen 3 and 5,000 megabytes per second for Gen 4. But what does NVMe have to do with this 17 year old Power Mac? Well, this was the first and only PowerPC Macintosh to ever be released with modern PCIe slots, which means we're open to the wide world of modern PCIe cards, including some NVMe controllers. Well, with some caveats, a lot of caveats actually. Let me explain. Most Power Macs from the G3 and up use something called open firmware to initialize hardware and boot the OS, which is sort of analogous to BIOS on a PC. And therein lies the big problem. If it wasn't designed for Mac, then open firmware probably won't recognize it. And since, this big fella was the only open firmware Mac to contain PCIe slots. There weren't really a whole lot of cards made to be compatible with it. The second problem is operating system. If the card wasn't made for Mac and Mac OS doesn't have a driver for it, then it just won't work. These two issues are why, for example, you can't just plug in a PC video card and expect it to work. Although actually, we can make this work, but that'll be a future video. But like most things, the solution is Linux, usually. Since we have Linux on here, once that starts to boot, its own drivers kick in and might very well recognize and power whatever non-Mac compatible card we shove in there. Keyword being might. So today we're gonna test some PCI NVMe cards see just how much of a speed difference they can actually make in a 17 year old Power Mac, and then reinstall Void Linux with some or all of the OS on the NVMe drive. But even if we can't boot directly from the NVMe drive, what we can do is put just the Linux boot partition 
on the original SATA 1 bus and put all the rest of the operating system and files on the NVMe drive, which would be really just as fast as if we had the whole thing booting from the NVMe drive, since that boot partition on SATA 1 is only used during the booting process. You know what else is fast? Using the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Easily create the web presence you've been dreaming of building, even with no experience, using Squarespace's all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website all about my shenanigans trying to get various non-Macintosh cards working in this old Power Mac G5. I could build it in minutes with Squarespace. There is a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from, and from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and of course, mobile friendly. With Squarespace's extensive built-in toolset, I can also optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and a whole lot more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code ACTIONRETRO to save an extra 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, let's tear into this Power Mac once again, which uh, fortunately is pretty easy to do, and see just what kind of a convoluted but super fast machine we can build. So let me introduce you to the PCIe cards that we'll be using and the PCIe slots on this Mac. There's four slots in total. The fastest slot, the 12 lane slot, is taken up by the video card. And then there's a four lane slot above it, an eight lane slot, and then another four lane slot. And I have three different PCIe adapter cards. And if you've been following along to the Twitch channel, you'll know that we've actually been experimenting with these cards a little bit. And it's actually kind of funny because not only were we streaming directly from the 17 year old Power Mac G5, but we are doing experiments on it live while we were streaming from it, which led to some pretty funny crashes of the stream. But anyway, this is the first card that I got and uh, <laughs> it seems to work great, at least as far as recognizing it in Linux. I've already got the 500 gig WD black drive installed in it. So this will be the first one that we look at. Next, I have this card from Sobrant, and despite having uh, way more pins, it is also a 4X card. And finally, we have this card from Cablec. Now, it was only $7 on Amazon, and it's supposed to be a 4X PCIe card, and uh, it's actually a little bit special. You see, it's meant to have an AHCI SSD, and people were using this card to actually boot up computers with a PCI adapter card. And I saw some promising stuff when I was first playing around with it that open firmware might recognize it. Although I don't know if this SSD is a bum SSD or not because it wasn't showing up as the 250 gigs that it's supposed to. And finally, a little bit of a wild card, this is a USB adapter with USB-C and two USB 3.1 ports, but it also has a slot for an NVMe SSD. But this slot actually connects to these SATA adapters on the back. So I think this is actually two completely separate adapters on the same card, NVMe to go to your SATA 1 bus, and then also USB ports. So we'll see if this even works. And if it does, we might use this for the boot drive since, well, it'll definitely be slower, but it's still pretty cool if we have all of the drives in the bottom section of the computer and we can leave this space open for future shenanigans. Okay, so I have the first NVMe controller card installed, but I just realized something. Every time we do a video on this Power Mac G5, the fan noise is always an issue. These things were not really known for their quietness. But I have an idea.
using a bunch of USB extension cables daisy chained together and a DVI extension cable, I've put the G5 all the way on the other side of the basement. So hopefully that'll do at least something to reduce the fan noise. Okay, so let me show you what we figured out on stream. The NVMe drive works just fine. And we were able to read and write to it. And we took some benchmarks on stream, but that was with the stream running. Let's do GNOME benchmarks with nothing else running on the machine. So we'll have to run GNOME disks as root. And there's actually a benchmarking utility built right into GNOME's disk utility here. So we see there's our 500 gigabyte Western Digital Black and then our 250 gigabyte Samsung SSD on the SATA 1 bus that, well, it works pretty great and it seems pretty fast and that's what we've been booting the machine off of. But let's run the benchmark to see just what the difference is. So benchmark disk. Yeah, here's the old benchmark from when we were running the stream at the same time. So we can't do the right benchmark because we're booted off of the disk and it's mounted. But we can do this transfer rate benchmark. We'll leave everything at defaults again. Start benchmark. Okay, so this is better than it was the first benchmark when we were live on stream. Still not uh, as fast as you'd think, but again, I'm no expert. All right, and we'll just use flame shot to take a screenshot here. All right, next, let's benchmark the NVMe. Oh yeah, look at that, 470 megabytes per second. So let's get a screenshot of that. So yeah, that is just a little bit of a difference there. Here is our Samsung SSD on SATA 1 versus our WD Black SSD on NVMe on PCI Express. Okay, now let's try these other two cards and see if they make any difference with the WD Black's speeds. Okay, so now we're in open firmware to see if by chance the machine can actually see the NVMe drive while it's booting. So we'll do a quick dev ls for device listing and just go through here and look for NVMe, no, NVRAM probably not going to see it. Yep, doesn't see it. Okay, so here is the second adapter and I was very relieved to see when the computer booted, there is OMG, it's NVMe, so at least the adapter works. Let's run our benchmarks. So 470 before. Let's uh, screenshot this. Call it NVMe adapter two. Okay, so here's the first adapter at 470. And here's the second adapter. Oh yeah, definitely slower by just a hair. 460 it starts at and then dips down to like 450. So right now it's adapter number one with a hair of a lead. Okay, let's reboot real quick and see if there's any chance that open firmware sees the adapter. Nope, open firmware does not see the second adapter either. Okay, so here is adapter number three, the cheap $7 one. And uh, it sees our NVMe drive just fine. Let's run the benchmark. All right, so it would appear to be just as fast as the second one. Okay, so here are the three adapters. And uh, numbers two and three are pretty close, but number one beat them both by at least 10 megabytes per second. And uh, this adapter, number one, was only like 12 bucks on Amazon. So really not that bad. But now let's just do a quick open firmware check just out of curiosity to see if 
open firmware can see this adapter. Okay, it does not. And uh, when I said see the adapter, that wasn't quite accurate. What it doesn't see is the NVMe drive. This computer could see an AHCI drive, which is a different standard of SSD, but unfortunately the one I have here doesn't work. Okay, I've loaded up this USB SSD combo card with this crucial 500 gig card that I found laying around, but let's see if it works. Okay, so I installed that weird USB SSD combo card and uh, used a bunch of SATA extension cables to get power to it. And if you can hear that noise in the background, that's the fan going at full blast. Yeah, it's just freezing. So I don't think it likes that card. We're gonna have to use something else for the boot drive. Okay, so I decided to do a little bit of an experiment. I swapped out the IDE optical drive that came with the G5 and in its place, I put a CF to IDE adapter with a two gigabyte CF card. I then swapped out the SSD on SATA for a SATA optical drive out of a Mac Pro and uh, booted it up with the Void Linux Live CD in it and it looks like it worked. So what I wanna try to do is install Void Linux mostly to the NVMe SSD and then just put the Apple boot partition on the CF card. And if that works, I think a neat solution would be to get a disk on module, like a really old one that's 512 megs or something. And we really don't need a lot of space for the Mac boot partition. We only need like 100 megabytes. Okay, so we made it to the Void XFCE live environment. Let's pop up a quick terminal. Oops. And do LSBLK. And yeah, look at that. SDA is our two gig CF card. And here's our NVMe card with the drive at, well, showing 465 gigs. Technically it's 500 gigs, but whatever, that's still pretty good. So I think what we'll do is run through a quick install of Void Linux using SDA, the CF card, as just the kind of boot helper with the Apple bootstrap partition so that open firmware can see it. And that card is just gonna boot the system into the NVMe drive, and then we'll have a super fast PowerPC Linux install. So Void is very easy to install. Simply void installer from the command line as root. <laughs> and just follow the prompts. Okay, so I don't think that wants to work. Let's try something else. Okay, so I've had a ton of trouble trying to get void Linux installed on this thing when using some of these IDE adapters for the Apple Bootstrap partition. But yeah, I tried SD card adapter, CF card adapter didn't work. I tried two different MSATA to IDE adapters, but I really want to get that to work right. And uh, I have a couple disc on modules on the way, super cheap on eBay. I have like a 512 meg coming and a 256 meg coming. And those things are cool. They're meant for industrial applications, but it's just basically flash storage that is on a IDE connector and you just stick it straight out of the connector on the motherboard. And I have read a couple things about issues with NVMe drives and the root file systems on Linux on PowerPC, but I don't really know if that's the issue or not. So once those disk on modules get here, I'm gonna retry installing void Linux using that as the boot partition. But other than the Linux install, we had a really good result today. I mean, the NVMe drive worked and it was blazing fast. It was like four times faster than using a SATA SSD on SATA one in the Mac. So I'm sure we can get Linux to run with the root file system on that NVMe drive. It's just a matter of figuring out where we're gonna put the boot partition so that open firmware can make it to the Linux partition on NVMe. But that'll do it for this video. I'm gonna keep tinkering with the G5 and this Void Linux install on 
random IDE stuff. And if you want to see some of that tinkering live, make sure you're following the Twitch channel, which again, I'll link below because I've been streaming from PowerPC Max directly to Twitch. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, that's a lot of Chris's, David Teglovix, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, John Mallman, Nick Hamsey, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible. <laughs>